Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Maureen. Um, good morning. Good afternoon uh, to everyone on the call as well as uh, on go to meeting. Uh, firstly, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to join. Um, I'm hoping this is going to be uh, an informational um, next one hour, and and uh, uh, and and I would love to uh, you know get as many questions and, and, and uh, what do you think about it? Know more about what do you think about it. So a little bit about myself. Um, I joined I joined Fishball last year. Uh, I I currently run strategy and products for Fishball. Uh, prior to that, I was the founder CEO of a company called Clip Technologies um, that actually was acquired by Fishball last year. Um, and and prior to that, I was uh, I was a senior exec at SAP. I ran I ran most of retail and media business. Um, uh, mainly focused around analytics, mobile, and big data. Prior to that, I um, have dabbled around a little bit uh, in the entrepreneurial angel investing world, um, very hands-on with a lot of startups in the Silicon Valley area. So I want to, I want to you know, start by a little bit setting the stage on, on what we as Fishball will do. Um, and I think you know, it's important for us to kind of uh, for everyone on this call to understand what what Fishball is a company and what our mission is, and then and then I want to you know jump into why intelligent marketing automation is is becoming the future for restaurant success. Uh, as a company, our mission at Fishball has always been uh, one single thing. It's about helping brick and mortar businesses, helping restaurants drive same store sales. Uh, we started this you know a decade ago. Uh, it was focused around you know, helping them with their basic marketing needs, whether it was just an email and so on. And today we are, we are uh, taking this to a whole different level where we talk about how intelligence, marketing, and automation come together into one single platform. And that's part of what we'll talk about in the next one hour. Um, a little bit around uh, how we measure ourselves. As much as we like to set a mission and we, we are uh, helping over 200 clients on that mission, uh, we have specific metrics on how we measure ourselves, right? We measure ourselves on fundamentally five buckets. The first one is uh, how, whether we can help same store sales by increasing frequency of visits, right? If I can make consumers come one extra time, I can make your guests come one extra time a month, one extra time every couple of months or one extra time a year, it helps you drive same store sales. The second bucket that we focus on is do we help you drive increase in redemption rates? Uh, a lot of you have um, highly promotional based businesses and I think uh, a big challenge that has traditionally always dwarfed the marketing business is how do you, how do you, you know, close the loop? How do you make sure that your marketing is effective other than broad brush attribution uh, technology? So part of what we, we try to measure ourselves is uh, specifically and clearly measuring ROI in terms of increase in redemption rates. Um, a lot of a lot of what we also do is to help help you understand the what I call time to cash. Right, uh, a lot of these businesses are cash flow businesses, and I think uh, when we when we run campaigns, the time to conversion or the time to uh, cash flow is an is another important metric that we measure ourselves on. Uh, the fourth bucket, uh, which is a, a very strong a suite for us is how we increase average check sizes, uh, whether it's about understanding your basket, understanding um, uh, transaction data, understanding um, purchase data, understanding ordering data. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, you know, the, the, the classic challenge I've seen in the restaurant business uh, since I've started my company is most restaurants uh, struggle to understand who their guests are, right? Not just not having uh, that visibility into who my guests are and building my customer database is, is a fifth and a core area that we help uh, our restaurants uh, grow in. Uh, a little bit about us, we work uh, with over 240 clients. Uh, we've been helping them uh, for several years uh, across, across the board on a variety of services. Um, and I think what sets us apart is ab uh, among anyone else in the industry is our, is our uh, is our scale. You know, if I had to just sum it up, it's just our scale, right? If you think about what we do, what Fishball does, uh, compared to anyone else in the industry today in the US, 
or even globally, uh, being able to serve over 70,000 locations, over 3 billion transactions from point of sale, you know, dispatching over a million and a half, billion and a half messages, um, you know, serving over 150 million guests is actually uh, is a commendable scale in the restaurant business. And we actually also partner with some of the most strategic partners in the business, everyone from, uh, from payment providers like First Data and Visa to, uh, uh, you know, to, to uh, strategic technology partners like NCR Alova and Cisco and, and Verifor. Now I want to switch into the topic of the day. Uh, why, why intelligent marketing automation? Why should we all care? Why are, why are brands, big brands, uh, investing a ton of money into intelligent marketing automation? Why is this relevant today? And why, why wasn't anyone talking about this in the past? You know, why we care, right? If you, if you kind of look at what's changing in the market force, and if you look at how marketing has evolved over time, um, you look at some interesting inflection points. You look at some interesting crossover points that are happening in the industry. The first thing that's happening in the industry, which over the last decade, is the number of channels on which consumers engage today, right? Uh, you today, I mean, if you take any one of you, myself, we, we have probably, we engage on emails, we engage on SMSs, we engage on, on social media, we engage on TV, we engage on print media. We have over, the number of channels we engage today has literally doubled over the last, over the last decade. And, and that also changes in terms of how many times a guest today is, is, is looking at all these channels, right? I look at an email in the morning, I look at a text in the afternoon, I check my Facebook sometime in the middle, and I, I'm, on, I'm on several different channels in the same day. And this has changed uh, uh, fundamentally how you engage with your consumers. The second big force is just because of the increase in number of channels and engagement, uh, what has also happened is people have the same amount of time, right? People still have the same amount of time. What has happened is people, people's attention span for each channel is obviously minimized, right? So you spend, just because my attention is now diverted across five, seven, ten channels, I have less time for each of these channels. And hence, being relevant and personalized matters, right? If you don't have a message that is relevant to me in the five minutes I have for my email in the morning, it goes into my spam folder, right? If you don't send me a text that is not uh, anywhere relevant to my purchase history or what I've been trying to buy, uh, it generally leads to an opt-out, right? I opt out of my SMS. If you send me a push notification or, or you send me a mobile in-app ad uh, or an offer that is completely irre irrelevant for me, you actually become a nuisance, right? I would, I would then delete the app. Um, so if you look at all these channels of engagement where you're trying to truly drive business growth, business success by bringing your guest much more often, increasing those redemption rates, increasing those check value, increasing your CRM database, uh, it becomes more and more important to be relevant and personalized because that's what uh, helps you win over, uh, win over someone else who's again trying to get the same share of attention, same share of wallet, same share of stomach. The third piece, the third interesting force is, is which is which is I think traditionally always been there is most restaurant owners, franchisee owners, and marketers have near zero time to manage all these different channels, all these different message types and variations in message, all these different guest types, and and automation suddenly has become a need of the day. Right? People don't have so much time to go through each one of these things, and they would ideally want to push a button and have all these channels deliver the exact right message to the exact right guests so that the guests feel highly connected and come back in more often or buy more things. So it becomes, so the, the fact that um, time has remained the same, channels have increased, people's attention span has reduced, um, and the fact that people don't have time has led to automation becoming a huge uh, driving force in the market. And the fourth factor, which is extremely unique in the case of restaurant business, is, is the fact that uh, you're a brick and mortar business, right? At, at the end of the day, you, a large part of your guests are driven by a geographical boundary. They're driven by a two to five mile radius around your same store, or around a single store. And 
and everyone and every other brick and mortar around that area is going for the same guest is going for the same audience it's going for the, uh, are going for the same share of wallet or share of stomach in this case and and obviously the one who is relevant um, is going to get that guest that day right so i think these are four critical factors that we need to keep in mind when we think about why intelligent marketing automation is becoming uh, a huge trend in the in the industry so how does that help so now, now that we understand what's intelligent market, well, we understand these forces, how does intelligent marketing automation truly help uh, drive business growth or drive business success? I think, I think it goes back to what Fishball fundamentally stands for. Uh, it's, it's influencing your guests. It's being able to understand your guests and engaging them with the right content, the right place at the right time, uh, leading to increase in visits or increase in check size or increase in loyalty, right? Because if you have a limited set of guests, that you have influence over who are driven by your geographical boundaries, you want to keep them loyal. You want to be able to connect with them much more often, much more frequently, and want them to come to your restaurant much more often than your the other neighborhood restaurant. So I think that's where being relevant becomes highly, highly valuable. And this is true whether it's across digital medium as or in-store mediums. Now a little bit on now let's start double clicking on this, right? Let's talk about, now that we understand why it's such a big trend and why uh, and how it influences your business growth, let's talk about the how. How do you achieve this? How do you achieve that business growth or how do you achieve a highly relevant marketing strategy that truly can enable, you know, move the needle on your, on your, on your same store sales or your business success? Uh, it breaks down into, I think, six, core factors. It breaks into A, it always starts with knowing your guest, right? All this understanding. And you can start on a scale of zero to 10 at, at literally at zero where you probably have a very basic broad brush understanding that I think my guests are between the ages of 18 to 35 or this. It's, it's more, um, and I think not, it's a less scientific, but it's much more uh, a gut feel approach which could be closer to the zero one levels to all the way to 10 where you could be highly sophisticated in understanding um, who are my highly loyal guests how much do they spend when did they last visit what items do they buy how often do they buy uh, what new items could they be interested in or new products that I'm introducing could they be interested in uh, what flavors do they like and so on and so forth right um, and 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 that's and then having and then adding that up with getting their intelligence across various digital mediums, right? How many of them have been using online ordering? How many of them have been using to go? How many of them have been coming through drive-throughs? How many of them come visit over a weekend? You can get more and more intelligent about your guests. How does that help? It helps because the next thing you can do once you have intelligence about your guests is to be able to, um, is to be able to be more relevant, right? You're able to now start segmenting that audience or understanding uh, a specific customer set, right, saying, okay, these are, uh, these are my high value customers. They have high lifetime value because these are people who come in uh, uh, fairly regularly. Uh, they spend more. Uh, they are always, they are my, my true local champions. They are my true ambassadors uh, for the business. And, and I think that's an interesting segment and that's a segment you always want to keep near and dear to you. Then comes a second loyal segment who can potentially be that top most loyal segment, but they're just not yet there. And these could be the people that you'd be really interested in moving up the chain. And then they could be the third bucket and the fourth bucket. And as you go through these different segments of audience and getting understanding of who they are and, and how often they come and what they buy, it helps you your business in a variety of ways. It helps you take out items out, out of your menu that doesn't matter anymore because you know your ROI on those items is probably extremely low. Uh, it helps you better understand what messages to be sent to which customer because which customer segment because they're contributing to the largest pie of your business. It helps you when, when is the right time to send it to them because you don't want to annoy them and, and you know, make them, uh, make them go away from your store. So there's a variety of business benefits that it can lead to once you start segmenting and understanding your audience. The third step is once you know who your customers are and you're able to uh, be, be more intelligent on how to reach them, you start actually creating content that's truly personalized, uh, which is essentially uh, uh, the holy grail of marketing, right? Where you 
are able to reach consumers uh, in their language at their at their preferred time at their preferred location uh, so that you truly influence them to come into your into your restaurant uh, the fifth or the fourth is uh, is being able to understand um, what are the right channels to engage them on right I'm you know for example I'm an I'm a text person I I'm most comfortable when reached on text but I'm, I also have an extremely short attention span so it has to be highly relevant uh, some people are extremely good with emails, right? And and they check every email and they're willing to print out every coupon and offer that comes in an email. Um, the millennials are all about apps, right? So you're all about, you know, send me the right information when I'm around that store or send me something which is, uh, you know, which is timely based on my last, you know, online ordering that I did with my mobile phone or pay ahead that I did. Uh, so depending on your audience and understanding your guest, you're able to reach them on the right channel Again, leading back to the same efficiency or efficacy or, or affinity that you can drive towards uh, bringing that same store sales or visits. Uh, the, the fifth part of intelligent marketing is, is, is around, which, which actually has evolved uh, technologically over time, is, is being able to reach people at the right place and time, right? Talking about knowing your guests, segmenting them, personalizing messages, reaching them on the channel that they like to be reached at, and then being able to reach them at the right place at the right time, uh, which is basically understanding uh, understanding where they are, right? Uh, you know, I was I was at a conference last week, and one of the things that we talked about is when you're when you're in a shopping complex, you typically have two or three options, right? You could go to a Starbucks, you go to a Pete's, you go to a Jamba Juice, you could go to a variety of you know uh, uh, restaurant choices. At that moment, it's about who influences me the most. Right? I have probably made up my mind that I'm trying to go into, let's say, a Starbucks or a Pete's, but if you send me something that certainly is tailored to what I like, maybe it's about being healthy um, or a healthy choice in the morning, um, it could influence my, my, my thinking. Right? It could actually make me feel, uh, oh, maybe I should be doing something different and I should go and get, grab a juice. So it's, it's all about uh, being able to influence at the point of purchase, and that's, that's I think, a big factor of intelligent marketing. And the last piece of it is taking that loyalty all the way into, into in-store experience, right? Whether it's, whether it's about uh, engaging them around your store, in, uh, anywhere, uh, when, you, when they're in your store, there are a variety of ways you can engage them, especially in helping you drive that check size higher, or helping you build a database, or helping you, uh, you know, give them something that's that's uh, or, or even with new product introductions you know helping them try something new uh, not that they're in your store so there, there are a variety of strategies that you can adopt when people are in store and and i think all these together sum up into what intelligent marketing automation uh, means and being able to do all this in an efficient timely manner uh, in a fairly automated fashion is where uh, the true uh, success of marketing automation is um, now I want to I want to spend the next uh, thirty odd minutes talking around talking about you know how Fishball has enabled this for a large number of our clients and and what are some of our capabilities that can help uh, help you as you you know as you strategize and go over this journey. I think the first piece of what uh, you know looking at the value you know the value chain of of intelligent marketing it always starts with having uh, a, a robust, uh, scalable platform that can actually help you, uh, that can be a true partner as you grow in your business. Whether you have a single store or you have uh, thousands of stores, uh, I think you need a platform that can take, because as much simple it sounds, it's that much complicated as you start getting into technicalities, right? And you guys as CIOs probably understand this better than anyone else. Uh, when we talk about knowing your guest, it's easier said than done. It's, you know, you're talking about 15 different data sources. We're talking about understanding point of sale transactions, understanding how a check format looks like, understanding PLU numbers, understanding you know, menu items and, and menu modifiers and, and add-ons and, and so on and so forth. Understanding uh, order ahead, people understanding mobile data, right? What are they clicking on? What are they searching for? What have they added to the basket? Essentially, you're talking about click data and, and digital data that's, that's generated. You're talking about uh, uh, m-commerce data or e-commerce data, commerce data that's, that's, you know, what have they paid for? What offers have they applied? Um, then all of a sudden, you're talking about social media data, which is 
you know, which is a different data format, right, in itself. Whether you're talking about a Facebook feed or a Twitter feed or an Instagram feed into into your into your data store. Um, then you talk about payment data. It's a completely different data type, completely different data structure, completely different data uh, data models. Uh, loyalty programs. You talk about SMS, and then you go all the way to an advanced form of data gathering, which is real-time data gathering. Where you, where if you use Wi-Fi and location and beacons, where you use you know things like GPS technology, and you use things around uh, Bluetooth-enabled technologies and Wi-Fi Wi-Fi uh, router-based data points, which you gather and and being able to a take a highly uh, what I call the three V's of big data, right? Um, the variety, a high variety of data. Whether it is, uh, it's a highly heterogeneous landscape where right? you talk about data that's unstructured, you talk about data that's highly structured, right? Uh, on Australia data is highly structured. Sentiment analysis on your Facebook data is highly unstructured. Uh, so taking structured data, unstructured data, over time data, and real time data, uh, and making sense of that for a single guest and, and converting that into action requires a platform that is A, robust, that's B, that's scalable, um, and C, that's, that's highly secure. So part of this trend that Fishball has brings to the table is that our platform today is a, is a big data Hadoop data lake store, um, and, and, it's, and it's proven, right? We process over 3 billion transactions. You've seen some of the stats. So I think that's been our biggest strength uh, in this business. That's the biggest strength that we bring to our partners uh, as we get into uh, helping them transcend this digital uh, digital growth. And we capture and essentially we, we look at data in, in a variety of ways. Uh, it all breaks down into three buckets. It's, it's behavioral data, transactional data, and locational data. So the more, uh, and, and each one of them further breaks down into understanding your guest on a specific dimension because some of their actions have a smaller shelf life while some of their actions have a longer shelf life and we'll talk about it as I get more technical into it. But so the first thing and, and just giving you a 20,000 feet view, once you have a robust data platform that can ingest a variety of data, um, can, can, can digest it, deduplicate it and, and have that uh, backbone, you know, you want to be able to deliver value, right? At the end of the day, it's about delivering business value. And you're looking at, so so one of the things that we offer is, is the ability to uh, get instant analytics out of the box, right? Where you're able to look at, uh, get that view of your guest instantly. You're able to see things like basic, basic business insights in terms of understanding which of your guests matter more. Are my loyal customers are more high frequency customers or is it more, uh, my email members who are high frequency customers. Is the average spend higher with my non-members or is my average spend higher with my members? So just having, starting with basic business insights uh, at a slightly granular level, not, not at, the, at the very basic level. At the very basic level, probably every one of us today understands sales by store, sales by location, sales by day part, sales by this. I think those are what, what I call basic reporting and basic diagnostics. Uh, what we're talking about is getting a little bit more insightful in terms of understanding which guest contributes to which part of your check and, and how often and, and, and whether it's which segment of your guests should, be, should you be thinking about. It then goes into understanding more details, right? And, and this is a classic infographic that we, 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 we deliver to some of our clients where you get to, at a store level, you're able to look at uh, who's influencing your business. Is it, you know, A, knowing your guest, what do they really buy? Do they? What are the top items that they buy? How often do they buy? Uh, what's and and seasonal aspects to it? Um, day part by time, you get to understand what your top, medium, low, uh, you know, low buckets of customers are buying. Uh, you're also able to look at it in terms of what percentage of your share of revenue are they contributing towards? Are they contributing? Is is it, are they part of your? Uh, is breakfast contributing to higher part of your revenue from your highly loyal customers, or is it? Uh, so it's again having uh, what I call a superimposed view of understanding which guest, uh, which store, what products, how often, uh, what share of revenue, right? And and that is I think a first a detail level insight that you get to get to see about your guest. Um, and as you start further double clicking on this, it's all about actionable insights, right? I mean, there's a lot of analytics and, and intelligence, and I ran that business for over a decade, and, and we built products uh, all over in analytics. And I think the biggest challenge that analytic tools today have 
everything from business objects to Informatica to any tool that you say take off the shelf, they can't they can't convert. The, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? It's more or less where you can define reports, you can get the kind of reports, you can do the queries you want, but in most cases, you need to know what to query. You need to know what you're looking for, right? You need to, what, what one of our biggest strengths has been being able to actually tell you or recommend what are actionable insights, right? Tell you that this is the audience and this is when, this, these are the top favorite items, this is when they are best to be reached at, and this is the day of the week that they should be reached at because fundamentally it's all driving back into the same store sales. This is what, so when you offer this item to this audience on this day at this time, there's a highest, highest propensity, highest probability that this person is going to come in or this, this is going to lead to a conversion. Being able to provide that uh, in a seamly, seamless automated fashion is, is one, of our, uh, one of our biggest trends. And, and it's also because we have understood the restaurant business and we, uh, we take in all these data models and all these data structures um, and are able to convert that into actionable insights. We're able to do this at a store level, we're able to do this at a product level, we're able to do this at a guest segment level. Uh, for, for some of us techies, let's go into what's under the hood, right? What do we really do? What, what's, what's our IP? What's our uh, technology IP? Um, and, and, you know, as a CIO, this is a very important decision factor. And so part of what we do under the hood is what you see here, right? We take uh, the data sources that we talked about as part of our big data platform. Uh, we have out of the box adapters uh, for, for the top point of sale systems. Whether it's NCR, Aloha, uh, Micros, uh, XPN, Posse Touch, uh, Squirrel systems, the, the, you know, all the top point of sale systems, we have a mechanism to integrate into these point of sale systems. Uh, what we have also done on the digital medium side, and since we ourselves deliver all the marketing channels, whether it's email, SMS, and so on, Obviously, every intelligence that comes out of that uh, is self-fed into our system. What we also have is a mechanism to uh, integrate either to third-party apps or our own app via our own our SDK, or, or you know, if it's our own app, it's obviously natively integrated. Um, so, uh, in short, right, we basically are able to uh, we build the pipelines to capture data from all these data sources in a seamless way. Uh, the second step, what we do is, is, is part of our IP has always been to deduplicate, cleanse, uh, whether it's, it's a overtime data, real-time data, and create, um, a, create a massive data store, um, which, is, which is stored in our Hadoop infrastructure. And our Hadoop infrastructure is, by the way, multi-tenanted across each of our clients. So this, uh, and I'll talk about security in a bit, but, but again, it's, it's a multi-tenanted uh, Hadoop infrastructure, uh, what you see at the bottom of this uh, page here. Um, and then once we have this, uh, this, this different data buckets, uh, what we're able to do and where our, uh, our intellectual IP or, or our domain IP comes into play is where we are able to uh, create um, meaningful segments for the industry, right? Where we are able to look at things around keywords and semantics, right? If you were a marketer and you were to send out, um, send out an offer like an orange smoothie, uh, you know, you, you don't want to be able to worry about every PLU number and every mapping every PLU number to a menu item to be able to. So being able to understand keywords and semantics where you just create an offer or create a promotion that, and you just typed in orange smoothie and automatically we being able to identify all the people matching towards those PLU numbers on your check and, and determining their purchase patterns and their spend levels and, and recommending stuff is, is part of our keyword and semantic strategy, right? Uh, understanding habitual habitual behaviors, understanding patterns, right? Uh, you know, which is which which is something that all of you have seen in the online world, right? You see this in Amazon, right? Amazon would always recommend to you. Most people who bought this bought that. Most people, these two items are always bought together, right? So these are all being able to create uh, attributions and and patterns that are uh, that nudge people into into that extra visit or into buying uh, uh, into a bigger check size. So these models are built into our platform and they come out of the box uh, when, when, uh, when you, yeah, as part of our analytics, uh, analytics cloud. Um, and the last piece of our of IP is once you have these models and once you have all these, uh, uh, what I would call uh, uh, semantic models and, and uh, uh, clusters, clustering models, you can convert that, that converts itself into, or presents itself in terms of what we call a predictive engine or a recommendation engine, right? And that's where it gets actionable because 
now that you mind people's habits, you mind their behavioral patterns, you understood their interest and intent via digital medium uh, in terms of clicks and searches and so on, you can convert that into actual um, actionable recommendations. You should, you know, Prem has been clicking on uh, on a Starbucks coffee all morning, but hasn't has moved away from a Starbucks store. We should send him a reminder saying, "Come back and get a, get your latte." Right. So being able to take real time intelligence on where Prem is right now versus his behavior in the morning that he wanted to buy a latte, he probably even added to the basket, but forgot to order. Right. And the fact that he's gone away from the store can lead to a real time action, which can potentially be uh, could lead to a visit. Right. You just suddenly you know added four dollars to your monthly or weekly sales so so that's a classic example of where um, real-time intelligence adds up with behavioral intelligence along with the habitual uh, knowledge about your guest and it led to a timely delivery of content that can lead to uh, uh, an in-store you know lead, lead to an extra visit or a, a potential increased check size now that we understand how intelligence is in, in, is, is important uh, I think you know, if it's all great if you know what to do and, and what, what matters, but if you can't take the action, it doesn't help. And that's the second part of what Fishbowl brings, brings, into, uh, brings, into, brings, to, uh, brings to the table is, is all we have, uh, and I think this is also what uniquely differentiates us in the industry, is that we are not just about providing insights and actionable insights. We are able to take those actionable insights and marry that up with our, our uh, our historic competence in delivering a highly powerful, actionable platform, right? Uh, so obviously, historically, we've always been uh, the market leader when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to you know marketing communication, right? We're talking about you know start off with emails, emails and SMSs, uh, highly effective campaign management, promotion management tool which seamlessly integrates into point of sale. Um, so these are these are things that you know just been there. Uh, we have built further and further capabilities on top of it, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you are, uh, who have used it have seen the value. Uh, in fact, all of our 240 chains uh, have been uh, a huge fan of our, our marketing uh, automation capability. So it starts with uh, campaign promotion management. Uh, part of what we do today is allow you to personalize every campaign. It can be it can be personalized at runtime when someone opens an email, when someone opens an SMS. So there are capabilities like that. Uh, which are getting more and more advanced. Um, and the second part of what we do is is what we are built in is the whole aspect of marrying intelligence with all these marketing, uh, with the whole campaign ma management or promotion management capability, where now you can start creating campaigns and promotions uh, that are relevant for a specific audience, right? And you can start truly personalizing it for a specific customer segment. And personalizing here could not just be Content personalization it could lead to it can be uh, can be time time based personalizations or event based personalizations and so on. Uh, all all of this again leading back to that higher click through rates, uh, higher conversion rates, higher open rates, and higher visit rates. Right. Uh, the third piece of what we do is is and what we've built on over the years is uh, is to be able to reach people across every digital marketing channel, right? So it starts with uh, our, our traditional competence around email. Uh, we have a, a next generation SMS platform uh, we launched earlier this year, which, which provides for all the segmentation and personalization capabilities. Um, we have a complete, uh, our own push notification platform, where again, it, it feeds out of the same uh, data platform, where you can still get that one view of your customer and be able to determine which push to be sent to whom at what time. Uh, and and uh, the last but not the least, we have our own uh, mobile mobile platform where we do things from apps all the way from in-app ads to in-app offers um, to being able to send in-app news feeds uh, via the app. All this uh, operating in, a, in, a, in an orchestratable um, in an orchestratable manner, right? I think that's going to be, that's a big part of, of marketing automation and intelligence is that you understand that when Prem opens an email, uh, he's much more engaged on an email than an SMS. Or when Prem opens an SMS and hasn't responded, you send an email back in two days. Or you send a push when Prem is near that store. Uh, and you know, being able to do this cross-channel in an orchestrated manner uh, uh, is definitely a big factor in driving 
uh, consumer uh, consumer visits, guest visits. Uh, the fourth piece of action is is uh, is how uh, is that we as uh, within Fishball have a location based services technology where uh, we can we are able to target uh, people by geofencing and geoconquesting uh, to to highly advanced marketing strategies uh, that are adopted especially when it comes to brick and mortar businesses because again you know your guests are mostly people within a certain mile you know within a certain radius so in this case. You can actually geofence your store. Uh, we take in all your store data. Uh, we uh, we create a latitude longitude around each of your stores, and and you can actually go into our platform and geofence your store, and you know basically say, I want I want to give a two dollar off for all my highly loyal guests when they're within a mile of my store, and and that could be a highly targeted offer for a very targeted segment uh, at the right place at the right time. Um, and again, a lot of this, this part of this, it's also involves machine learning, where we understand how receptive they are to it, and we don't uh, reaping. And this, there are various other factors that go into um, uh, intrusive marketing technologies, like like push notification or SMS, which involves uh, us understanding how people are behaving when they have been targeted. The same thing you can do uh, geoconquesting. This is extremely popular. Uh, uh, with, with a number of our stores and, and in general in the retail business um, where you're able to target guests when they're going to a competitive restaurant. It could be a competitive restaurant in the same shopping complex, it could be a competitive restaurant within, um, within uh, you know, on the other side of the street, uh, being able to you know, target your consumers when they go towards a competitive store and bring them back into your store uh, uh, is a big factor because retention is a huge aspect of of a, of a same store sale business because you're again driven by a captive audience who will live within a certain within a certain mileage of your store. Uh, the fifth piece of engagement when we talk about engagement and, and converting that intelligence is is all around apps, right? And and and, and I'm sure all of you um, are well aware of different ways of in-app engagement. I think uh, I think app has. A variety of use cases around it. It starts with um, it, it starts with you know being able to provide basic convenience capabilities, um, which we, we we provide today out of the box. Uh, we have some standard templates, best in class templates for the restaurant industry, uh, which comes with capabilities around you know where you can uh, look at your favorite offers, you can look at your coupons, you can look at all the stores around you. Um, yeah, we integrate with an online ordering to be able to place order aheads. Um, and, and I think, and then we again, the app, the whole mobile commerce is, is like a virtual storefront. So being able to again show relevant content on everything that I purchased in the past, offers that are highly relevant to me, helps people engage much more often in the app and leads to more of mobile transactions. Uh, and those are capabilities that we built in, built into our app because again, our app is fed out of that one um, big data platform. Uh, the sixth part of engagement, right, as we keep talking about every engagement channel in digital is about engaging in-store, right? Uh, what are the means and mechanisms that we use to engage in-store? Um, for some reason, I don't see an iPad, you know, the, the first one has an iPad around it, and I don't see the, I don't see the iPad, but, but essentially there are, an in, there are three mechanisms that uh, today we champion for in-store engagement. Uh, the, first, the first mechanism is all around uh, using iPads, I think in-store is an interesting interesting way to capture and build and know your guest. Uh, so a simple iPad solution that ties back into our platform for loyalty play. Uh, it helps to build your database. A, B, it helps people to redeem real-time offers. C, you can also dynamically serve ads and offers when people are in-store uh, that could lead to higher check sizes. Uh, and it's just about increasing, enhancing consumer experience when they're in there, and it ties into our loyalty, into our loyalty play. Uh, the second part of what we do is is around beacons. Uh, this again a, a popular uh, area that has uh, that has growing interest, and uh, a number of restaurants are trying to test this out, see the impact, how is this truly changing consumer behavior, and guest behavior. Uh, so we, we provide beacons. We have a beacon platform where you can configure beacons. We ship beacons, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, and last but not the least is in-store Wi-Fi. So your classic Starbucks example, right? Walk into the store, 
uh, you provide for a Wi-Fi and, and, and use that as a mechanism to capture customer data and use that customer data again into your omni-channel marketing strategy, right? Tie, tie that customer data back into what they bought, how often they buy, and, and again, it feeds back into your overall marketing machine. Um, a little bit around beacons and Wi-Fi um, in detail. Uh, so, you know, I've been asked, oh, I skipped two slides, sorry. Uh, a number of times there's confusion on how, how these two technologies really work and, and people want to understand uh, a little bit more in detail. So I'm going, to, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on just beacons and Wi-Fi. Um, I think beacon, beacon fundamentally is a low energy Bluetooth device. Um, it is not intelligent. Uh, all it can do is just like your car recognize um, when someone with, uh, with a Bluetooth that can talk to it uh, is around it, right? So, so what we do as part of our beacon, beacon management solution is we ship you beacons. We don't manufacture beacons. Uh, we work, we have partners with whom we, we partner for the hardware device itself. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's almost the size of a, a candy um, and you can actually place it anywhere in store. You can have as many beacons store, but we typically would recommend, um, you know, depending on the size and square footage of your store, we will recommend, you know, we will provide you a recommendation on how many beacons you should have. Uh, what a beacon does is uh, it integrates, it, it works with most smart, it has, it, it works with smartphones and works with mobile apps. So if you don't have a mobile app or you don't have, you know, you're not trying to reach people, uh, which is smartphone, most people have, uh, you know, for those of you who don't have a mobile app, I don't think Beacon uh, would be a viable strategy. What it does is it's able to, we provide, we provide Beacons, we also integrate into your app if you ex have an existing app or if we provide you the app, it comes pre-integrated into the app where you could actually now start uh, going into our platform. Uh, you can, and the way Beacons work is, you just define, um, you define the region of, of influence. So basically within that region, it's, it's more a micro region. It's around 500 meters to 1,000 meters where you can say, when people come within this zone, um, you know, send them this message. And you can pretty much configure that in our platform. It's a three-step process. Uh, and typically, you know, from start to finish, from the point um, of, uh, of deciding to move forward to the point of actually going live and, and reaching your guests, it's, it takes less than a week. Um, from the time, you know, since we, uh, we, we ship it, you can configure it and you can set up your campaigns and, and target consumers on beacons uh, using, using beacon. Uh, similarly for Wi-Fi, uh, in the case of Wi-Fi, uh, we, uh, we partner with Cisco. We, uh, we have uh, a, a strong partnership with Meraki Wi-Fi. Uh, we're already integrated into their EMSP, Enterprise Mobile Services Platform, where Fishball and EMSP together have built uh, joint capabilities towards uh, engaging people when you have a Meraki Wi-Fi uh, in your store. Uh, so what you can do is uh, you can create your own landing pages in, part in EMSP where you could, it's almost like the Starbucks experience. You go in, uh, so the platform allows you to create your own landing page. You can have your creatives, and, and typically our recommendation when you, when you create such a landing page is to leverage that landing page to capture customer data. Uh, so you, you, know, you could use a Facebook login or a, or a first name, last name, or sometimes as simple as a phone number or an email address as a mechanism to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, as soon as they connect to Wi-Fi, uh, you can actually now, what's changed now, which by the way, doesn't even work at Starbucks, is, is you can now start sending personalized content Right? It's really personalized and basically two people sitting in the same store using Wi-Fi could see completely different content or different coupons or different offers, again, going back to that intelligence platform, right? And that could lead to, and it could be just about, you know, why don't you try our new LE food option or why don't you, you know, you just got upgraded to a larger size smoothie and things like that. Um, so you could give a very personalized experience for, for your guests uh, when they're in store. Uh, which is again possible because of our joint collaboration with Cisco and, and our joint IEP on this. Uh, I want to, you know, we have 10 minutes. I want to quickly um, sum up and talk about two more things. I want, one is the last but not the least is, is um, engaging around social, right? Uh, today as part of uh, Fishball platform, we have a mechanism uh, where, you know, Facebook losses last year where they have built an ability within Facebook to influence people by location because location has become a 
very important, I would say, you know, third leg to the stool because traditionally you always talk about what people bought, how often they bought, what, how do they engage online and how do they engage offline, right? So what do they do in store? What do they do on your online ordering or your mobile ordering? Uh, I think the third dimension that's become extremely interesting is, is location, right? Where are people right now? And, and what Facebook allows us, uh, so we have a native integration to Facebook paid media where we would, where every content that you can create on our platform, whether it's, a, it's, a, it's an offer, it's a coupon, uh, it's a promotion, or it's just a plain campaign, you can now uh, create a fence, a geofence around, around each of your stores via our platform and, and we integrate into Facebook to be able to launch this. So what it basically does is, is allows you to only target people within the two to five mile radius of each of your stores. And, and the way it gets targeted, it just shows up into their Facebook feeds. So it's a much more targeted way of approaching it. Um, so your ad is not going to be shown on everyone's Facebook feed. It's shown on a very specific segment of audience. Again, it's going back into intelligent marketing, right? So you can now segment and, and target uh, and it's paid media, so you're not, you know, wasting your money on, on delivering ads and offers or promotions to people who are not even close to your store. Um, so that's, again, uh, the last piece of uh, our digital suite of engagement. I want to, uh, you know, I want to sum it up um, by, you know, summarizing our core capabilities. Uh, everything around digital media and marketing that, that we just talked about, email, SMS, push, Facebook promotion management. And I think one thing that's unique about us that sets us apart in, in a lot of ways is that we are able to, we are, we are ground up built for the restaurant business. So a lot of our capabilities allow for local store marketing, franchisee based marketing, uh, you know, being able to create an approval workflow for franchisees to get approval at a corporate level and vice versa, right? So a lot of those capabilities are, are thought through and built ground up that way. Uh, we have a complete mobile suite, um, everything around proximity marketing, uh, location-based services, mobile apps, and in-store engagement, including mobile analytics. Uh, and, and obviously everything being driven out of our backbone, which is our data and analytics platform, where uh, you, can, you get that one view of your guest, understand a store level intelligence, guest level intelligence, and product level intelligence. Uh, quickly around our, our infrastructure stack, uh, uh, so this is uh, this is how so we have a, a, a shared data center. We have our own data centers um, so for data, to ensure data data security and mission critical activities, and we we share it with Amazon for certain messaging and, and critical uh, uh, targeting activities, especially around mobile and APNS and so on. Uh, we have a big data Hadoop stack, uh, which is again multi-tenanted. Um, and and has its own uh, security and authentication authorization and uh, network and data privacy and security at a tenant level. Uh, we have a unified transactional database uh, where you know once all your data is deduplicated, uh, we create that massive data store. And on top, uh, we have our three clouds: the analytics cloud, the marketing cloud, and the mobile cloud. Uh, and they are exposed uh, again. Uh, so it's a clear three tier architecture. It's exposed through REST APIs and the necessary mobile microservices involved, which includes the location based services, push notification services, analytic services, and enterprise services, which includes email, SMS, promotion management, and so on. And, and, and then lastly are the touch points, whether it's mobile or, or iPad or, or uh, let's say email itself. Uh, I think it's important to understand we have a scale out architecture. So, um, you know, our infrastructure scales out and in, uh, and this is part of our strength is being able to deliver at scale. So uh, I want to, you know, wrap it up with key takeaways, right? Uh, I think there are four, you know, if you, even if you forget about everything I said today, I think there are four things as a CIO that matter. Um, uh, one is uh, intelligent marketing is here to stay. I think it's crucial. Everything's going after the same same guess. Everyone's going after the same share of wallet, same share of stomach. So it's important to be relevant. It's important to be timely. It's important to be personalized. Uh, second, uh, data is data and insight is becoming the backbone of of, uh, of running a, a successful business or business growth. Uh, and when we talk about data, we're talking about volume, being able to handle large volumes of data, just because the amount of data today is is doubled. Uh, large variety and large and, and speed of data, real time also over time. Uh, 
The third piece, uh, which is which I think is is core, and I think probably uh, the the central aspect for any CIO is scale, speed, and security. Uh, I, you know, there are a lot of companies, you know, especially you know, there are a lot of upstarts that, that come up in the in the restaurant space, and one of the challenges. Uh, you know, and as a startup, when I was in a startup, you know, one of the, our biggest challenges was, you know, being able to scale and create the level of security at scale and create the level of speed when you start scaling. When you talk about, you know, I was just talking to someone who had, who has over 3,000 stores, uh, one of the largest chains, uh, several billion dollar business. And, you know, part of being able to serve such a large chain uh, and send that many messages with, and process that many volumes of data and, being able to do that with accuracy and and you know 36 you know 365 24 7 uptime is is something that is important for every CIO. And lastly, uh, one other thing that I've seen in the industry is uh, when you have an end to end, it helps address a lot of data consistency, redundancy, and attribution challenges, uh, along with the obvious benefits of cost and interoperability. Right? When you have one end to end stack, uh, it's much easier, much more cleaner flow of data and much more cleaner way to uh, show attribution and close the loop um, than in a hodgepodge heterogeneous landscape environment where the integration costs get much more expensive than, uh, than a, a, a full platform stack. I think with that, I have five minutes left. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sum it up and I'll, I'll open up for uh, questions. Great, thanks, Prem. And we did get a couple questions in, so um, we'll we'll see if we can fit them all in here. But um, we'll start with this one: What is unique about Fishbowl's intelligent marketing offering compared to other marketing solutions out there? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and you know, we we get into that situation uh, many times, and you know, it comes up every time I'm sitting with a CIO or a CEO in the room. Is you know, I think what you know, it goes back to what I what I talked about as our differentiation. I think we have been ground up built for the restaurant business, right? We've been ground up. There are, there are, you know, just being very specific about it. There are aspects around local store marketing. The fact that we, we think about store level engagement, store level marketing. Uh, the fact that we have built integration into point of sale systems. Uh, there are capabilities like that, which are very unique to the business. Um, and we have a whole a module around pricing and menu management and menu optimization where based on guest performance, guest intelligence, uh, the product market basket, uh, the basket analysis and store-based store, store -based basket analysis, we determine what items should be you know, put in a combo or put together as a combo or what should be taken off of your menu list and so on and so forth. So there are aspects of what I call uh, domain expertise that we have built over the years that are unique to the business um, that are and we've built ground up built for that business and I think that's what that's one of the reasons why uh, you know uh, most large chains most large brands uh, tend to go with us against most competition great thank you and then the next question we got was how does the location based targeting really work okay um, I think well let's so now there's a variety of ways today location-based marketing works. So I think when you talk about pure play location-based targeting, what and location-based targeting A is only possible. This is you know, it's ground rules. I think A it's only possible uh, using smartphones, right? Um, so so assuming that there are you know that's probably the main medium of engagement. Uh, what Apple and, and Google, both Android and, and Apple provide out of the box is what we call location-based services. Uh, what you see in your phone, right? Uh, location enablement, right? So it's again an opt-in mechanism. As people opt-in into location, they provide what we call uh, a mechanism. They provide standard out-of-the-box OS services. It's called location-based services. It's also called significant location change. So you can configure. So what you what we do is in, in our platform as part of our SDK, uh, we configure those services. We are able to determine and define, um, and it you know and we do it in a way. In fact, uh, one of our strengths in that IP is uh, that IP is we do it in a way that it does not drain people's batteries as well, because a lot of your location-based services, just like a Google Maps or Apple Maps, uh, which actually you know use the same location-based service, uh, drains your phone because you're pinging your phone every second. So there's a lot of technology that goes into uh, using GPS to determine where you are and how far are you. And, and um, so, so we have, uh, these are services that are built out of the platform, out of, out of the OS that we integrate into. 
Uh, the second part of location-based services, which is around in-store, uh, which is what we talked about, which is a beacon and Wi-Fi. Okay. Great, thanks. And the next question is, what POS systems do you work with and does your offer management integrate to it? Uh, yes, offer management integrates to it, uh, which is what we call promotions manager. Uh, I think that the POSs we work with out of the box are in Sierra Aloha, we work with Micros, we work with Xpian, we work with Posse Touch, we work with Squiddle Systems. Uh, and we have uh, we have a uh, we have a, a, a general purpose adapter that can also be configured for other other POSs like Rebel or Brink. Okay, thanks. And I think we should probably wrap up because we're right at the top of the hour. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we will make a recording available to those of you who joined us today. And we hope you'll join us again for a future webinar. And thanks, Prem, for, uh, for leading us through the conversation today. Thank you very much. Thank you.